Hello, this is Mark from ExcelOffTheGrid.com and in this video we're looking at how we can create a filter all scenario inside Power Query. Now, when we filter in Power Query, it reduces the table to include only those items which meet the filter. However, that criteria is then hard-coded into the M code. And then, if we want to filter all, we can come to Select All and click OK. However, then there are no criteria at all included in that M code. In Excel, we deal with this kind of problem by using the asterisk wildcard character. If we enter an asterisk into a data validation list or any other cell that's used in our formulas, often this is used as a wildcard that represents any value at all. It lets us select everything, but Power Query doesn't have an equivalent wildcard functionality. So within our steps, when we filter, there is no way to allow a filter all option. Even if we enter an asterisk into that filter section, it will try and filter down to that asterisk character. So in this video, let's look at how we can create a similar filter all type functionality inside Power Query. If you want to work along with this video, then download the example file and there are links in the descriptions box below. The source file is in there too, so you will need to repoint that query to where you save the source file on your PC. So once you've done that, if you're ready, let's get started. So here is our scenario. We have an Excel table here, which has been loaded via a query. And that query is called source file. We have a tab with two tables. The first table is called account list, and the second table is called category list. Both of these tables have been linked up to the data validation list contained in cell C4 and D4 on the search tab. So when I click on those, they will select the items from that list. So what we want is to be able to select items from this list, click refresh, and then our query will update to only include the items which match those criteria. So to start with, I'm going to click on this first cell here, C4. I have given this the name account filter, and I've got my category filter in cell D4. So with my named range selected, I'm going to go to data from table slash range. So that currently has a null value. What I'm going to do is change that to a text data type, right click to replace values, and replace null with a blank text string. Then I'll right click and drill down. I'm going to click on that query, right click and then duplicate. And this one will be called category filter. I'll come back to the source step, just change the word account to category. So therefore we've now got both of those values loaded into Power Query. Right, I'll just close and load those into Excel. So close and load, close and load two. I'm going to load them as connection only and then click OK. Right, let me just select some values on those to prove that they work. And when I go back into Power Query, refresh my preview, I should see that both of those now contain those values. So I'll come to my source file, and I'm going to filter on my account field. I'll select any value in there and just click OK. That word, accounts payable, which is the item I selected, I'll press delete on that and change that to be account filter. So that's now filtered to that value of direct wages, and then I'll do the same on the category field. So I only have one item there to start with, so let's go to text filter equals 
that's into cost of sales. And again, that value in the formula bar, I want to remove, replace it with category filter. Okay, everything looks good. I'll close and load that into Excel. So now if I come to consultancy income and income and refresh, you'll see that works perfectly well. Now what happens if I want to see everything in the income category? Well, I'll delete that, right click, refresh. Ah, you see, this is where we have the problem. Because if we come back to Power Query, As we go down those steps, you'll see as soon as we filtered by the account filter, we just refresh the preview on that, it gave us an empty table because the account filter was a blank value. So once our table was empty, it didn't matter what happened in the next filter because that table already had no values. Okay, so how can we get around this? I'm going to click on the filtered row step and then insert a new function. I want to insert that step and delete the text from there. So I'm going to type equals if account filter equals a blank text string. In that case, I want to return the step before that item was applied. And that step is called changed type. Else, if my account filter had a value, I want to return the step where that filter was applied. And that was called filtered rows. So now, because our account filter was a blank text string, it's now returning the table as it was after the changed type step rather than the filtered row step. Let's apply a similar approach to our filtered rows one step. So I've clicked on filtered rows one. I'll come up and insert a new function equals if category filter equals a blank text string, then, then return the step before that filter was applied. And in our applied steps, that is now called custom one. Else return the step where that filter had been applied and that was filtered rows one. Right, I'll now come across, close and load that. Just close my queries and connections pane. I've also created a macro button that just refreshes all of the queries in this workbook. So it's a slightly easier interface to use. So now in my category, I can select any item and it will return all the items from that category. Equally, if I select something from my account, I can just filter on that single account item. And if both of those are blank, it's going to return all the accounts and all of the categories. There we go, that's all for this video. We've seen that even though Power Query doesn't have the asterisk wildcard that we could use in Excel to select all items, we can still use logic to create a similar effect. And hopefully in this process, you've learned a little bit about Power Query, about how we can apply those steps in almost any order, and how we can also enter an if statement directly into the formula bar. So if you liked this video, don't forget to subscribe, like, and comment, and I'll catch you next time.